Before 1919, cars were sold for cash. That changes as a guy named John Raskob comes to GM from DuPont and begins to realize that, in fact, there needs to be a way to sell cars to people who can't afford them. How do you sell into a saturated market? How do you sell to people who don't have the cash on hand? And so Raskob develops General Motors Acceptance Corporation, or GMAC. It begins as a way at first to finance wholesale credit to car dealerships, those same dealerships that sold two-wheeled carts for Durant. But it evolves into a way to sell, give credit to consumers. And this expands GM's market share throughout the 1920s. They rapidly and easily deploy this credit to push not just cheap cars, but expensive cars. Part of Sloan's genius is realizing that Americans by the 1920s don't just want the cheapest car. They want the car that they want. And they're willing to pay more for it, even if it means going into debt. And so what GM does is create an, ev an evolution of price points for its different brands, where Ford focuses on making the Model T cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. GM realizes that Americans want different kinds of cars. While GM made all these different kinds of cars and developed new ways to sell them, Ford focused just on the Model T. He never developed finance. He never developed variety. Now, the finance part in particular is quite interesting because it dovetails with his anti-Semitic worldviews. Now, for Ford, it was the Jews that were behind all the failures of capitalism, that the Jewish bankers of the East were parasites on the American economy that were destroying his traditional view of the mechanic, of men who made things. Now, he wasn't very self-aware that, in fact, it was his factory system that was reducing men from versatile mechanics to single-minded drones in a factory that had terrible lives. But that aside, for him, the idea of the Jew dovetailed with the idea of finance. And so as Ford grew, he didn't rely on New York finance in the way that either Alfred Sloan or William Durant did. While GM set up GMAC to offer credit to its customer base, Ford instead, and this is kind of amazing to me that anyone did this at all, actually set up savings plans at the Ford dealerships so that you could come in and open up a savings account where you could save for your Ford car. The Ford weekly purchase plan would give you interest only if you completed the savings for the Ford plan. Now, this was part of an ideological program uh, that Ford had, a vision of how America ought to be rather than how America was in an era of mass production. In 1927, Ford wrote that, I sometimes wonder if we have lost our buying sense and fallen entirely under the spell of salesmanship. The American of a generation ago was a shrewd buyer. He knew values in terms of utility and dollars. But nowadays, the American people seem to listen and be sold. That is, they do not buy. They are sold. Things are pushed on them. We have dotted lines for this, that, and the other thing. All of them taking up income before it is earned. This whole system of selling and credit was an anathema to Ford's values, which were, I think we might give him a little credit, rooted less in anti-Semitism or a particular kind of anti-Semitism, but also part of a worldview that privileged production and skilled labor over a world of consumption and de-skilled labor. By 1927, GM controls about half of the American automobile industry, and Ford, which had basically invented the American automobile industry, now controls only a fifth. By the end of the 1920s, Ford is almost on the brink of going out of business while GM is triumphant. And this is largely because of how they differently thought about sales, and how they differently thought about credit. And in the end, how they thought about what the American consumer needed. In fact, Ford focused too much on what he thought they needed, whereas Sloan focused on what they wanted.